Members, good morning. We formed a quorum and it's also the scheduled meeting time. In accordance with ROP 22K, when a panel conducts a joint panel meeting with another one to discuss issues of concerns to both panel, then uh, the meeting should decide who is going to chair the meeting. Mr. Tommy Chung, Chairman of uh, Development Panel, would like me to chair this meeting. I'd like to know whether you agree or object to this proposal. All right, thank you. There is no objection. Then I will um, chair the meeting this morning. We have one item on the agenda, and that is Public Housing Development Plan at Wang Chao Yunlong. We're going to meet representatives from the administration and also deputations and individuals. Please invite the deputations to come in now. While they are coming in, may I draw members' attention to the fact that on the 15th of November 2016 at a joint panel meeting, uh, some members asked for supplementary information from the ministry. And uh, the information sought was uh, sent to members yesterday via paper 2016-17. Uh, and uh, we have 70-odd um, uh, deputations, and five deputations have sent in their written submissions. And just before the meeting, we have uh, received uh, three more submissions, and they are tabled. To ensure we have sufficient time for uh, discussion with the deputations. Uh, this meeting will be divided into two sessions until uh, 12.45. We'll have to take a short break at about 10.15. I think we're going to revisit this subject. So we've scheduled another meeting uh, for, the, um, for the 6th of December at 10.30 so that we can follow up on this issue. And also supplementary information provided by the administration. All right, let's uh, go into our agenda proper. Let me thank the deputations and individuals for coming to the meeting this morning. May I remind you that if need be, you may use the EIPs and also the mic in front of you. There are buttons in front of you. Uh, zero is. Uh, uh, the floor, channel 1, Cantonese, channel 2, English, and channel 3, Punghua. You will have each up to three minutes to speak. May I remind deputations and individuals that your written submissions and remarks are not protected by the Electrical Powers and Privileges Ordinance. Please uh, take note of uh, the guidelines we've provided for you for um, members of the public in the public gallery. And uh, the uh, notice has been uh, attached to the invitation by the secretary to you, and it's also tabled. For those in the public gallery, you may approach our staff present for a copy of the guidelines. All right, so if everyone is ready, then, or if you have uh, written submissions, or you have a speaking note, uh, please put your name on it and uh, hand it over to our staff before you leave and then uh, copies of it will be sent to members for the information. All right, I will now invite deputations to speak. Mr. Cheng Chun Ho. Mr. Cheng, you may start. Thank you. Good morning. This government has worked very hard to increase housing supply to address the housing needs of the public. And uh, the public housing development plan at Wangzhou Yunlong can provide a large amount of uh, housing units. And Siwa uh, Leung, the CE, uh, has uh, personally taken charge of uh, the development and also the debt for uh, um, uh, uh, Queen's uh, Hill. Soft lobbying sessions can understand the uh, reaction of the uh, local community. It has been an established uh, practice. The uh, Pingshan and Yunnan uh, Rural Committee has been consulted, and the plan procedures 
have been completed through the town planning board. Everything has been held under, uh, uh, done in the public and the accusation that there's collusion between the government, the business, the rule, and our tribe forces are totally ungrounded. I support the phased development of Huang Chao. We should start with phase one first so that the administration can provide 4,000 units earlier. And uh, there will then be a uh, no uh, slippage uh, for other PRH developments in Yunlong. Infrastructure facilities can be provided at once, so uh, the EIA can also be addressed, and um, and uh, and dealing with brownfield sites are also complicated, and therefore more time is needed uh, to come up with a plan. Understand that last Tuesday, Mr. Hadi. Uh, Mr. Andy Drew <coughs> moved a motion at the development panel to exclude the uh, development plan at Wang Chao from the uh, Capital Works uh, grant for 2017-18. Uh, uh, this uh, non-binding motion was passed, and I find it regrettable because many people living in subdivided units are waiting for PRH allocation, and I think the motion has let those people down. Lastly, I support the Public Housing Development Plan at Wang Chao Yunnan to be implemented ASAP. Thank you, Mr. Zimmerman. Thank you, uh, Chair and members of the Legislative Council and the Government. Uh, my name is Paul Zimmerman and I speak as the CEO of Designing Hong Kong. We have given our comments on the plans for the development in the new territories for many years. And we've asked government to focus in all their plans for Hong Xiu Q and Yunlong South and the other parts of the new territories on the importance of the relocation and the redevelopment of the brownfields and the essential requirement for government to be organized with its economic policy and its response to the needs for that industry and the relocation demands for that industry. It has not been. We have never seen Greg so involved in any of the plans. We saw some very preliminary plans from the planning department responding to the needs of the brownfields only by coming up with some empty forms for co concrete structures which are completely unsuitable. There was no, never a consolidated, appropriate response from government because it never got their act together. Now I've spent a lot of time in the new territories, first of all to chase the e-waste smugglers those smugglers of e-waste that bring it here to Hong Kong and they chop it up before it goes to China as parts. A very low economic use, highly damaging to the environment. And the other one is second-hand car traders who bring the cars from Japan, chop it up in the, in the brownfields and ship it as parts to Africa. Two incredibly low economic uses highly damaging to the environment and all of them involve illegal structures, unauthorized land users, smuggling, breach of customs laws, immigration laws are being breached obviously when you walk around, labor laws are being breached all there in the new territories in our brownfields, no response from the government. <laughs> We have a very low economic use of that land, a very poor use of that land, and the government should take action before they move out villagers who live there. Now, I also like to make a comment in my remaining seconds as the district councillor of Pok Fulam. I've been consulted by government on housing estate developments. Wafu. I've been soft lobbied for Wafu. And at every meeting, there's a piece of paper that has two columns. My comments previously and the responses that government has agreed to give me. Any suggestion that there is no track record of the discussion between government and the interests in Wang Chao 
is completely absurd. Everything that lower level government officials do in their negotiation and discussion with the community oh, um, is recorded. Thank you. 下一位是冼浩輝先生多謝主席我是公民黨的冼浩輝 Thank you First, the Civic Party is in support of the construction of PRH However, we have to clarify some of the mysteries surrounding development of Wang Chao first when it comes to uh, the development of Wang Chao, uh, we think of collusion between the government, business, triad, and rural forces. How come we've got this impression? Because uh, the government has not tried to dispel such um, uh, concerns, and uh, they may uh, cover up important information, such as the area and the um, activities being carried out on brownfield sites. So uh, people may think that uh, that's a proper description, that is collusion, is a proper description of the whole thing. And when it comes to local consultation, a few soft lobbying uh, sessions have been uh, conducted. Uh, it started with 17,000 units and then uh, scaled down to 4,000 eventually. Well, for a Qing Yi at Qing Hong Rou, uh, there was objection uh, by the relevant district council and 960 odd submissions to Town Planning Board to oppose that development. Regrettably, the government has uh, um, persevered. How come that views expressed by members uh, at a proper channel have been totally ignored, uh, but for soft uh, lobbying sessions, the government attached so much importance to uh, views of uh, the local um, village uh, personnel. So. The Civic Party uh, proposes that um, community impact assessment be done in all or uh, in similar developments. You can use a quantitative or quantitative uh, model to assess the actual needs uh, of the local residents and to see whether they are in fact uh, in support or opposed to the development. And we are against uh, this idea that uh, greenfield sites Green Belt be uh, developed first. Uh, it's not that Green Belt are really sacrosanct, but then in this Wang Chao um, um, situation, Brownfield sites are untouchable here. We cannot accept such an idea. We see no motivation on the part of the government to address the Brownfield sites issues and it's also responded to the aspiration that brownfield sites be developed first. There are 28 uh, car parking sites, 22 uh, uh, car open storage and uh, car parcel and so forth. And I think they should be developed first. Now, there are five suggestions from the Civic Party. First, uh, we want to have an open database on brownfield sites. And second, we should ban activities that pollute our land so that there will not be further contamination of our green belt, site, green belt sites. And uh, we should also uh, review this uh, brownfield. We should have a brownfield uh, first um, model of development. Thank you. Mr. Lai Waitong, recently I've uh, approached our residents, in particular CSSA recipients living in the northwestern part of NT, and they cover that cover areas such as Wang Chao, Hong Shekyu, NDA sites, they are receiving CSSA. And they live in so called illegal uh, squatter huts. And they have told me that they are very worried because with the urbanization of uh, Northwest Santi, these really uh, basic at the very low level will not benefit from the land resumption process. According to the latest information from the government, priority is given to uh, developing land occupied by non-indigenous villagers first, even before a proper relocation plan has been formulated. So residents are really worried about the relocation arrangements. Right now, some Hong Shui residents told us that each month they are paying $2,200 to um, pay for a very small 
um, huts. Once Wang Chao is developed or Hong Shui Q is developed, they cannot um, find housing in the same area with similar prices, and they uh, they will be forced to um, move under flyovers. In the overall Wang Chao development, the CY Leung administration talked about helping the grassroots, and they want to find housing. And um, right now, only around 2,000 um, single individuals are able to find housing. So we have to speed up the process so that they won't have to wait 8 to 10 years. In the entire Wang Chao development, is the government really helping the grassroots in um, solving their housing needs? Are they really trying to find shelter for the grassroots? And um, the government has been um, placing a, a wrong emphasis all along in Wang Chao development. In other words, the soft lobbying culture. And um, from various media reports, we can see elephant projects in different districts. We, the government has to review its lobbying policy. Mr. Perry Kwok. Just to kick things off, I just want to ask all the members from the pro-establishment camp, including Chen Maobo, uh, who perhaps got abducted by an alien today, who knows, right? I just want to ask you guys, have you guys ever thought about actually being a human being? I don't know if you know this, but using your heart to actually listen to what another person has to say is actually an expression of love and your humanity. Have you ever listened to what the villagers from Wan Chao has to say? Have you ever made an effort into getting to know them on a human-to-human -human level? of knowing the emotive ties that they have to their homes? Or have you simply just treated them as numbers on a spreadsheet, as empty spaces on a map waiting for you to, to dispossess them? If so, you're not a human being, and it's time to rethink your strategy on how you want to live your life. If you deep down indeed admit that you have never listened to what the villagers has to say, or perhaps even the Hong Kong people as a whole, can you really make the claim that you are indeed for the Hong Kong people, or that you love Hong Kong, as you say you do? Of course, in public, in private, who knows, right? Just think about it. If your mom or dad is a Wan Chao villager, what emotions will be going through your head at the moment? The government thinks that moving people is easier than moving things with no life whatsoever in the brownfield. The government consulted the powerful, but not the less powerful. Who are your parents and friends? Will you perhaps feel angered? After the government dispossesses them, well, sad day for you. What a sucker. You're on your own now. Will you perhaps feel cheated? Will you perhaps think that this Hong Kong government is not for me, but for the powerful? That's all I have to say. Thank you. Miss Ko, good morning. Please be seated. I wish to stand up, Chairman. Please um, be seated. Do I have to sit down? Yes. We have to, um, according to the Bible, you have to speak the truth and justice. Wang Chao villages, we are not alone. We are here to tell the truth and promote justice. If we are honest, we can say what we want to. We are not alone because everything we say here can um, reflect justice at the Legislative Council from 2008 to 2016. Over the eight year period, I was forced out and at Choi, I lived in Choi Yun Shun. As of now, um, for basic services like Wi Fi, we have to seek help from the Rural Committee or Heng Yi Kok and PCCW. This is um, uncivilized and this system must end and we must ab abolish it immediately. We have to respect the roots of the um, residents of the new territories. If um, we are, if the government is to move a temple 
or a columbarium, they would consult the personnel. So um, we expect them to be reasonable when we um, when they reprovision facilities or a, a village. So why isn't the government talking directly with people or, or villages? Anthony Cheng, why don't you talk to the Wang Chao residents who are live and well before you? The lack of communication is inexcusable. This is unreasonable. Anthony Cheng must visit the village and talk to the villagers. We request Anthony Cheng to visit the village. Ten years ago in Wang Chao, because of a um, bridge in Shenzhen Bay, we were forced to relocate once. And um, I've been in Wang Chao for more than ten years since, and now I'm being forced out again. My um, 80 plus year old mother um, passed away because she couldn't um, t withstand the shock. Why isn't Anthony Chang and his administration taking away my mother? Why are they taking about taking away my rights and dignity? Thank you, Ms. Law Kun. Good morning. I'm from Sam Chun. I've been living here for 30 years, and um, I virtually built the entire house for myself. The government never helped, and now they are um, trying to take our homes. They didn't communicate with us, and they never consulted the area. They are simply um, going through back doors and soft lobbied um, the rural strongmen. They ignore the villages, and um, we are treated like trash. Is this really Hong Kong? This is just like the mainland. Are you saying that we have no rights because we live in public housing? So, what do you think? How, what's your attitude towards Sam Chun? We paid for our houses as well as our land. And now you are trying to um, take our land away from us. So um, what about the rights of villages? This is unacceptable for the government to do. You, Anthony Chang, you have to explain this to the villagers. You have to talk to the villagers. We have been here for decades. We built everything for ourselves, but the unscrupulous government um, is being unreasonable to the um, Samchun villagers. Thank you. Mr. Cheng Wai. Thank you. I think it's a waste of time, this meeting. We have had a few open hearing sessions in Wang Chao. Where was Matthew Chang? Where was Anthony Chang and Paul Chen? And um, the government officials are just um, ignoring us. This is their attitude. I don't have much to say, but um, I um, came all the way this morning to share with all of you my thoughts. Since um, the Wang Chao incident was reviewed by the media a few months ago, as a member of the public, I have been um, looking at um, the electrical meetings. It was um, ho horrifying. The worst um, thing was the government's attitude. We are talking about more than 4, 000, uh, 400 villages from several villages. You, soft, you did some soft lobbying. So are you ignoring all the villages from these villages? And um, the plan is to build 17,000 housing Units and at the end, the number shrank to four thousand. Did you explain the situation to villages? No, you didn't want to touch the um, brownfield sites. You are um, looking at open space, and and um, you are demolishing homes in favor of um, scraping yards and other operations. You are bullying the villages, and um, for. The um, consultancy um, OV rep, they are passing over the government's information to New World and other consortiums. 
and um, they are allowed to uh, make profit and change land use. Two weeks ago, I um, watched the joint meeting. Long hair um, grabbed the government's documents, and the government decided to call the police. The government was um, well. They w w was requested to um, share some information, and the consultancy firm was um, asked whether um, there's any um, transfer of interest. And um, you were asked whether you would consult the DOJ to um, consider suing this company, and you said you have no plan. So how can the public trust the government? We have doubts whether um, the government. Um, is being threatened or something. The pro-establishment camp is trying to uh, protect the government all the time. I think um, this is not just government business rural triad collusion. Um, the party is also a party involved. Ms. Chen Lai Fun, please remain quiet. Ms. Chen Lai Fun, thank you. In the past, a um, f foolish um, Hong Kong person never um, cared about politics, and um, she went to um, school every day. And around ten years ago, um, in a school lect lecture, um, some villages appeared in a, a lesson. The government could not listen to the voices of the people, and that foolish um, Hong Kong um, girl woke up because she still has a conscience. Um, the um, more than a thousand he he hectares of land um, were used for um, various operations, and the government is um, is ignoring other sites in favor of the villages or open space. The government is. Um, has never faced up to challenges, and in a radio program, there's collusion between the government, business, rule, and triad. What's the difference between between collusion and collaboration? One thing is one thing um, is done under the daylight, and one and the other is not. The um, plan to build seventeen thousand housing units would um, eventually involve open space. And um, th there, there was a blatant um, shift in attitude. So, um, what's going on at Wang Chao? Wang Chao is part of Pengshan Village, and Cheng Zhu Wo, um, the chairman of the rural of of the Pengshan Rural Committee, is the boss. And um, the then um, Yunlong. Um, District Council Chairman Le Chen was consulted before December 2015. You are uh, asked to leave by January 2018. Did Le Chen ever consulted you? No, no one said yes. You heard that the pro establishment camp um, attended a residence meeting afterwards, but it was useless. So, what's the point of the meeting today? Can you really hear us? I hope um, the people on the internet would um, uh, would be able to hear what I say today, and um, no one might remember the um, villages affected in um, Chao Yunchun or Masipo village. How much more um, ecology do we have to sacrifice before the government would um, listen? When I was young, I used ICQ and Taipo, and people would ask me whether um, there are cows in Taipo. And um, if I'm asked the same question again, I would tell them that um, cows might be driven out of Hong Kong very soon. I want to remind members of the public that you should pay attention to your wording when you speak, Mr. Li Yokang. I am um, a villager of Wingming Chun. The government did some soft lobbying on the brownfield sites in Wang Chao, and um, the government. Hired a consultancy over rap, and they introduced in public housing to our uh, village. They um, use their power to relocate villages. Is this really fair? Are these fair, are these plans really fair? What about our rights?
some rural personnel who don't live in our village can um, build um, housing blocks, and they can um, modify the the roads. So um, do they enjoy special privileges? What about our rights? What about our basic rights? We have been living in the villages for more than 70 years, but we are still being deprived. The villages are still in, are still being deprived. Is there still human rights in Hong Kong? This is a question I've been thinking about. Leng Chi Cheng, you have to explain to the villagers. If you are not here, your party has to explain this. You, what um, did you promise to the villagers? Leng Chi Cheng and your party must pay. The villagers only have a humble request. We've been living here for 70 years. We have never had any worries. Why are you using your your powers and the property developers to evict us? This is immoral. Can I, by the same token, can I just demolish your homes? By paying you six hundred thousand dollars or 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 what not, we want an investigation. Can you at least um give us some dignity? The pro establishment camp is trying to defend the government. You are um pushing the villages to the verge. How can your party explain yourselves to the Hong Kong people? Aren't we? People of Hong Kong, are you people of Hong Kong? Isn't there a need to um, seek justice? Please remain quiet. If you don't launch an investigation, the members are um, unethical. Miss Ng Ching Han. Good morning. I live in Feng Chi Chun. I've been there for almost half a century. The landlord was bought by my great grand by the great grandmother of my father. My grandmother was here. My father was here. I am here, and so will my future generation. We have been here for almost half a century, and um, in November two thousand one five, the lands department CDD, the huts unit. More than twenty people opened my um, gates, and they said the government will resume the land. At that time, I was at work. My younger brothers and my husband were all at work. Only two um, elderly people with chronic illnesses were here. They said. Um, the land resumption would take place in January 2018, and they are carrying out a population census. My father trusted them too easily, and they um, wrote down the names of the residents. And um, the f f f the uh, account or registration was frozen. It was horrible when I. Um, returned from work. My father passed me the letter. It was horrifying. I didn't know what to do. Um, my, our family had ten people. Where could we go? That has been the domicile for a few families, including my younger brother. So if it, if it wasn't for that piece of land, we would be paying high rent. We would be living in subdivided units. It's because of that land. Uh, our ten-person family can live there. So why has the government changed? When I received the letter, I sought out Mr. Leung Chi Chang. He said, "Well, the government is resuming the land. There's nothing you can do about it." Then I sought out uh, Ping San uh, District Councilor Zhang Xuwo. 
I made a lot of phone calls. Uh, his clerk and secretary answered the phone and said that he was back on the mainland. And they dismissed us. And then I realized uh, the scandal that he was uh, the person behind the scenes uh, manipulating the. And I found it very scary. His brownfield, his warehouse, parking lot, time's up. I object to the government's proposal uh, in zoning this as the phase one and uh, having the uh, car park as phase two, phase three. The reason is that we have a hundred villages in the green belt and if you develop that it would involve the relocation of villages. We heard the villages, they don't want to relocate. So basically, this is against public opinion. And second, there is limited open space and uh, public housing. So even if you want to uh, relocate them in situ, it's not possible. And in the car park, it's a brownfield and our previous speakers had already heard their views. You should know what their stance is. Now, Brownfield should be used for uh, high density projects uh, and our CE constantly harps that Hong Kong has limited land and now it's being used as low density warehouse, car parks, so it is against uh, the land use principles and the land also uh, occupies government land, so that is illegal, so that should be dealt with. So I feel, well, there I have a few recommendations that the government needs to consider. First, regarding greenfield land use and uh, relocation of villages. So before development, there should be full consultation with the villagers, and we also need legislative uh, council members and district councillors to consult with them. Well, the government feels that they've done sufficient consultation, but the 2016 elected LegCo members, have they been consulted and have district councils been consulted? So I think you should bear that in mind and avoid uh, giving public uh, uh, the impression that there is collusion between government, business, rule and triad forces. Uh, regarding resumption of uh, the car park and uh, the use of government land, there should be punishment, uh, there should be legal liability and the government officials should also be reprimanded uh, in order to uh, uphold our accountability system and we also need to ensure that the highway can be built on time and regarding uh, car park spaces uh, there is a lot uh, there's a high demand so the government should negotiate with the landowners of the car park and build uh, multi-story car parks the land should also be set aside uh, for to handle the shortfall of uh, public housing. Thank you. Next, Ms. Choi Lai Gun. I'm a villager from the three non-indigenous villages. I've been living in Yangok, Sunshun, for 20 plus years. In October 2015, the government uh, posted notice in the village saying that our three villages would be raised and that we needed to relocate before 2018 and up till now. We haven't seen any government official negotiate with us. They have not consulted our opinion. They have ignored our feelings. And I would, uh, would like to express my utmost dissatisfaction, anger uh, towards the government. The three non-indigenous -indig villages in Wangzhou have been zoned as a green belt. It should not be a priority for public housing. We've been living there for 20 plus years. The environment is very good. The air is very good. We've been living very happily. We have never thought of relocating. Especially now, in our 50s, we have been living there so long. Uh, we are not as vigorous and youthful as before. It's not easy for us to relocate. And the green belt, aside from providing comfortable living quarters, it also is 
a lung uh, for a for the surroundings. Shouldn't we develop brownfield first and then only green belts? Uh, in the warehouse industry, they say it's easier to relocate people than warehouses. Now that's absurd, illogical reasoning. Uh, the public housing was a, uh, had a scale to accommodate 4,000 people, and uh, in the brownfields, uh, there is no definite plan. So where, when will we see the phase one? So it's obvious that the government is providing the green light for new world development to build private housing. Is the government really building housing for? Uh, is it, are they really building public housing, or are they just allowing large consortiums to make money? If that is not government uh, corporate collusion, then what is? So my stance is. We will not relocate, we will not demolish our uh, families, we are against collusion between government and business. That is very unfair. Uh, please um, remain calm. Next is Ms. Kong Waisam. I'm a villager from Wing Neng Chun. My mother had purchased land in uh, 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 in, and a uh, building in Wing Ling Xun. So Si Wai Leung is uh, the culprit that they had not consulted the villagers and last year in 2015 on 30th of October a group of people more than a dozen said they were conducting a census. My mother was not aware and uh, opened the door they took pictures uh, where they were uh, their information was registered and on when they left on the way out they put a notice saying that the CY Long government wanted to demolish our house and resume our land. And uh, my mother couldn't uh, bear that. Uh, and uh, she's now paralyzed. Uh, she's now on tubes. And uh, my mother cannot uh, ingest food. Uh, my mother enjoys her food, and, uh, but now she's uh, very sad and uh, it weighs heavily on me. So, does Si Wai Long have a mother? Uh, they want to, to resume our land, they want to demolish our house, they want to provide a green light for new world development to build high, low density residential, luxurious uh, housing uh, for profit. So LegCo and the general public, you can tell us, is Si Wai Long correct for doing so? And on 20th of September, Wang Zhou, uh, 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 villagers went to the government house and uh, Si Wai Leung asked us, who, who are you? And uh, we, I said, we are Wang Zhou residents. And Si Wai Leung lowered his head and uh, retreated. He was afraid of us. So Wang Zhou uh, residents, we are not uh, President Xi. We uh, don't rank higher than Si Wai Leung. It's inconceivable that uh, he was not willing to negotiate with us. Uh, uh, it's not surprising that uh, his uh, uh, underlings, uh, Chan Mao Bo, Zheng Bing, Anthony Zheng, are, are not willing to negotiate with us. All the senior officials are not willing to communicate with Wang Zhou uh, villagers. So the poor, suffering Wang Zhou uh, villagers have no channel to vent their feelings. You sleep well, you live well, uh, but uh, the villages in the three non-indigenous villages, we uh, live with a sword above our heads. We are tortured and suffering and uh, we have to be relocated, we have to be evicted very uh, soon and uh, I also have dogs. Next is Mr. Tin Beng Fai. Uh, please remain calm, otherwise I would have to invoke uh, rules. Uh, you should be called Zheng Mo Leung, you unscrupulous Zheng. As a village, as an official, you don't want to meet with villagers. You say you want to build housing, but you are actually giving a green light to uh, pr private consortiums. Uh, you are starting work uh, at midnight. Uh, you are doing uh, very sneaky stuff. 4,000 units in Yunlong. So, 
every uh, everybody knows that it can be done anywhere in you know why do you have to raise the three non-indigenous villages do you know that uh, by disrupting families you will be um, uh, you will, uh, will be you are angering the gods uh, well I know that uh, I should not harm other people's interests do you know that by forcefully uh, evicting people you are causing a lot of harm uh, even insects uh, they don't sting people but when you destroy the beehive then you know what will happen animals when you uh, demolish their uh, domicile they will f bite back uh, the government says they will relocate well uh, but uh, the private consortiums need to make money uh, they want to evict people they don't care if you uh, are thrown into the streets uh, that is the SAR government uh, they have never relocated the villages they have never negotiated with villages never heard villages uh, the basic law uh, under the basic law everybody uh, enjoys certain rights but ever since you announced that uh, land would be resumed the villagers have been living under a sword you know the senior officials you are living the high life uh, how is that fair so let me teach you some morals you need to uh, be accountable to the public you need to be uh, you cannot engage in graph you you answer to the general public. You need to listen to public opinion. The Hong Kong public uh, have called for the two senior officials to step down, but uh, you want us to evict. And if we don't evict voluntarily, you will call. You will have the police forcefully evict us. And the pro-government pro camp is even worse. You are assisting the government. You have no uh, principles. Have you? visited the site have do you know uh, what how important the green belt is by damaging the green belt you have severe consequences uh, the concrete jungle uh, release uh, uh, releases emissions uh, do you think uh, free-range chickens are health are better or force-fed chickens are better so you are building 4,000 units uh, okay time's up miss Lamwailing good morning I'm a villager from Feng Chi Chun. As a 20 year old person, I'm very disappointed with the government. I think human rights are one of the core values of Hong Kong, but now our villagers are being exploited. We are not uh, obstructing development, we just feel that uh, we cannot be evicted. To because of government uh, business collusion. The uh, resumed land is a green belt, it's a country park area. Now, the government says that ground, brownfield development should have a priority, but uh, ultimately uh, they have come up with the excuse that the, the government wants to go with the easy first and the difficult later. And the government says that that is to resolve the younger generation's housing needs you might be able to provide uh, public housing for some people, but you have deprived us of our rights. Uh, this is a uh, vicious cycle. It's uh, not helpful. And on, another, and on another hand, we've heard of collusion between government, business, rural, and triad forces. The government says they want to develop the uh, area and they need to consult uh, the uh, the residents and soft lobbying is part of their work, but we know in the, at the end soft lobbying was the deciding factor in this whole arrangement the government when they consulted the Ping San and uh, uh, of rural representatives that they, uh, they did not but they did not consult the affected villagers so the government says uh, public opinion is important but to uh, we ultimately we know that public opinion has been ignored our villages are in the dark uh, there was a the uh, consultation period, and we weren't aware of that. So initially, the government said that uh, the work was going to be transparent, but uh, 
the, the data that was uh, available to us, a lot of it was redacted. Uh, why is that? Uh, is that uh, information that uh, cannot be made public? Why can't they be transparent? Uh, in the collusion between uh, consortiums and government, uh, Hong Kong, the Hong Kong public is losing. Our villages are uh, losing. This is just the tip of the iceberg. If we don't speak up, the greater Hong Kong public uh, will suffer the consequences. Miss Slam Jinghua, I am a resident of Wing Ling Chun. I've lived there for 55 years. And, uh, my, we used to have a chicken farm. We provided free-range chickens for restaurants. Uh, also have a lot of uh, fruit trees, orchids. We provide quality uh, produce. There's no preservatives, no um, uh, insecticides. Uh, so it is a whole ecosystem for insects and birds and uh, more importantly, uh, it the tr orchids attract bees so you know that uh, the food supply or food security is a problem in the world is because of a large-scale tree felling and uh, there's a large reduction of bees so when vegetation don't uh, have a pollination from bees uh, it leads to a decrease in yield so you know that uh, this is an important uh, 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 part of the food cycle and if our food cycle is uh, disrupted we will all starve. So we also have other vegetation that can be used as medicine, uh, TCM, uh, it can be used as herbal tea. So we ha have a lot of natural resources there. So the green belt uh, provides uh, exercise area for the residents. So without the green belt, now even if you just reduce the size of the green belt, it will uh, increase the heat island effect. It will lead to a rise in temperature, and our residents also uh, they have a lot of they keep a lot of cats and dogs. So by evicting them, they will be evicting animals as well. Even animals have living rights. So we know that uh, there's a lot of housing need, but uh, while uh, developing, the government should also provide choice, but now you, they are forcefully evicting uh, villages. And uh, our efforts over the years will be uh, going down the drain. So that has uh, stoked our our ire and angst. Uh, I am a law-abiding, uh, tax-paying citizen, but on this occasion, uh, the, the government has forced me to take uh, uh, the road, uh, the path of opposition. So, uh, developing the green belt uh, involves a lot of engineering. You are actually wasting public resources. You are taking on a difficult task. Uh, you are destroying a forest for one tree. Next, Mr. Poon Wing Lok. Good morning. I have visited uh, the three non-indigenous villages this year. You all understand uh, they are uh, dissatisfied with the consultation. Uh, I've also uh, they also tried to meet with uh, Anthony Jerome. Uh, and where are our senior officials? Well, uh, there's collusion between the government and um, uh, the rural and tra and uh, business forces and uh, these villages, non-indigenous villages, are very helpless. I have five proposals for the administration uh, regarding uh, the government's. Um, uh, the government is being accused of bullying the weak and uh, fearing the uh, powerful. I think the government uh, should use the CE's uh, policy uh, to deal with uh, the uh, specific issues first. For the first phase, uh, there will be 4,000 uh, units. Now, for these uh, three um, indigenous villages who have to be evicted, and that is very unfair. And we want the government to conduct uh, extensive consultation as soon as possible. 
and uh, indigenous villages should also be consulted before making a decision. And you may learn from the practices of Australia and Canada. You conduct a social impact assessment first before land assumption, or you can uh, follow uh, what the URA uh, did uh, for redevelopment of Kowloon City. Neutral parties did uh, various assessment on um, various uh, social impact assessment on uh, issues such as uh, livelihood, employment, schooling, so on and so forth. And the government should show us some political determination to deal with brownfield sites first. They uh, should uh, discuss openly uh, reasonable uh, compensation uh, arrangements. So it's not as claimed uh, by the rural forces. They get compensation compensation of uh, several thousand square feet, and then uh, the um, look at the activities on brownfield sites uh, should be relocated to industrial sites. We understand that this brownfield site study will only be done in mid 2018. Well, um, a similar study was done by a civil organization in 2015. We urge the administration not to drag its feet and complete the study and publish a report by mid 2017. We want to have a balanced development approach and we should protect local farming. Uh, the government is going to build a big white elephant in the eastern part of Lantau. We want the government to make good use of the uh, thousand square feet brownfield site and uh, develop the uh, golf course in Fanning first. Next to Ms. Wong Hyu Nam. Thank you. Good morning. I was born and also grew up in Hong Kong. Uh, most uh, PRH units are allocated to new arrivals, but for Wang Chao, the three villages are, are sacrificed. And uh, what will be the new um, flats for? Every year we have over 400,000 new arrivals, more than 54,000 new arrivals. These um, villages have uh, lived in the Green Belt for a long time, but they have never been consulted. The government conducted lobbying sessions with the rural forces only. So do you call this just? And uh, four, even before uh, there was proper consultation, the government uh, forced uh, the Wang Chao development, and Wang Chichang supported the three villages, I mean the three um, villages from the three um, villages to uh, protest, but then he never opposed the uh, plan here, and Anthony Jung has never met with us. Thank you. Mr. Chen Oi Kam, good morning. I am Chen Oi Kam, village representative of Wing Noon Village. The development has uh, caused a lot of uh, anxiety in our three villages. We urge the government to shelve and stop the plan. And for Arab, there is a plan here. At first, uh, the uh, roundabout was not allocated to uh, New World, nor was it done in the second round. And however, the third time, there is a site here earmarked for three 39 story tall building to be developed by New World at the site occupied of Vingning Village. And then uh, the driving school will also be used for building more blocks uh, by uh, New Town. I think this is very unfair to our village. They want to um, wipe out our village. I urge ICAC and the Commercial Crime Bureau to investigate because obviously there is collusion between the government and the business sector. Feng Chi, Yong Oak, and Wing Ning cannot live peacefully. My mother is now wheelchair bound, uh, wheelchair bound, and she's double incontinent as a result of this incident. So, does this government have any heart? They don't treat us like human beings. They want to avoid the uh, burial ground for the sake of feng shui. They um, 
they realign the road, they build one block less. So is it just? Can you explain to us why? Because we don't want to be relocated or demolished. We will persist to the very end. I hope this government can act fairly and do better. We are now returned to China. Hong Kong is China. China is Hong Kong. How come on the mainland you get compensation for for land resumption? Why is it that in Hong Kong we are evicted to become street sleepers? Why, of course, government officials, you live in luxury flats, you enjoy um, decent living. We've lived in this place for a century. We've no, we are worry free. We're not asking the government to give us a place to live. Why should the government rob us of our land and force us to uh, sleep on the streets? Where's justice? I urge the Peng Shan Rule Committee and also uh, Mr. Kenneth Lau, a member of this council, to help us and help us to uh, seek redress. Thank you. Madam Chen, Lai Tong. Good morning. I live in Wingling Village. Together with my family, we've lived there for half a century. It is unfair and unjust to resolve the green belt. In 2014, uh, October, and um, the OZP was resolved. We were kept in the dark, and the OZP draft OZP was never posted uh, in our three villages. Our rights are being deprived. We are in a green belt. Under the guidelines for uh, Green Belt by the TPB, Green Belt is for promoting conservation and uh, to prevent urbanization. And the uh, natural landscape should be preserved. It serves as a buffer between the rural areas and the uh, developed areas. So the f three villages are located on Green Belt. We have uh, five flies. We have uh, different types of butterflies. I don't know what species can be found on the brownfield sites. We have slopes, so we have uh, plateaus, so we have uh, thousands of trees. And uh, there is also a natural trail going up to Aka Hill. Just outside my house, there are burial grounds. Well, this plan has uh, avoided all the small houses. You look at the boundary here, it's so rugged. How come the boundary is like this? Can the government decide uh, no matter how much land it wants to claim? In June 2014 and January in the same year, 4,000 units were mentioned. The village, villages that would be affected were not mentioned. Feng Chi and Wingning both had a history of over, have a history of over 80 years. Our interests have been ignored. We were never consulted. In October, at the district council meeting on Wang Chao, some members mentioned that in the industrial uh, estate of Yunnan, there is vacant government land. 4,000 units can be built and is served by roads. So there is no need to use the green belts here. The Brownfield Sykes and Wang Chao has a bigger area and is already formed. There is no need for infrastructure development. The government has taken the need to damage our green belt. Therefore, we must protect our green belt. Uh, the development here should be shelved. Uh, there are so many, there are so many collusions and uh, things in the Wang Chao development because the scheme is neither fair nor just. Uh, we are going to fight to the very end. There should be no demolition relocation. I invite Mr. Chao Hang to speak after Gong Xiaopang. Mr. Yip Hong, Mr. Yip Hong, am I coming through? I think the most important thing in Hong Kong. It's not just to develop a, our financial services industry. In our NT, we have beautiful landscape. Since 1997, we have seen green field sites emerging in the 
NT. Why have so many people opposed the 689 government? Because there is no judicial justice, there is no universal suffrage, and uh, we don't even have the right to use our land, and therefore people will oppose you. All right, uh, the poor have no right. And uh, Chu Keng Wai uh, beat up uh, pedestrians, and it's been over uh, 700 days since that happened. And for uh, civilians, they are uh, jailed. Such developments are so unfair. Why do we call a CY Lung 689? Because he got some of his votes from the business sector. Uh, well, uh, Team Sacha Promenade has been controlled by a business uh, developer. And uh, Wang Chao, the villagers here back to government, and, uh, and their voices are totally ignored. In 2014, the same happened to Northeast NT. The uh, Kutong cool village uh, was demolished. Now you have politics, uh, Chinese style. Villages in Mashipo are evicted. Their huts are, are demolished. And isn't it shameful for Wang Chao? Many villagers have told Lang Chitong and uh, Tong Shitong and NDG wrote a letter to the Yunlong District Council, and Tong Shiwa did something very shameful. He just tore up Mr. Ju's letter. He said that Ju Hoi did, did so many bad things, we would not listen to him. The government and the pro establishment camp. I often talk about uh, doing things under a broad daylight, and I think you are bullying, bullying the disadvantaged. I'm sure uh, you will face judgment, but for Hong Kongers who have a heart and a uh, Pro establishment members of a heart, please do not can, do not sell Hong Kong people for your own interest, Mr. M. Chak Han. Mr. Mo Yong. Uh, we uh, met when uh, you you when you were the district officer or land officer of a north district. Now you've been promoted. You forced the villagers out. Uh, the uh, villagers who live in Wang Chao, most of them are not indigenous villagers. They are grassroots. Whenever there is any rezoning, there will be eviction. So they have lived there for decades, and they are evicted when they are old. And you are stirring up conflicts between uh, the re uh, uh, these people and those who are waiting for a PRH. To address the housing problem of Hong Kong, you cannot just grab land blindly. On the one hand, you say there isn't uh, land for PRH, but what about the uh, superstructure of uh, MTL stations? Well, the sites are being sold to large developers for luxury flats development. By uh, selling land, what housing problem have you resolved? Why should the um, uh, MTL uh, sites be sold uh, to a large consortia. Why must villagers be evicted? We live in capitalist Hong Kong. We only attach significance to land ownership. But what about the housing rights of the grassroots? They're not being taken care of. So uh, you are creating a con conflicts, and you do not develop. Brownfield sites, not indigenous villages, are always sacrificed when there are massive developments. Even for villages of money to buy land, the um, compensation they get cannot be compared with the indigenous with the indigenous villages. So uh, they may use a uh, tribe forces uh, by uh, illegal dumping. They drive the non-indigenous villages out. Typo Al Kon Hang Green Belt faced the same fate. In 2011, there was a mini rezoning application. 
the planning office uh, back then said that if Green Belt is allowed for development, then that would be a bad precedent, and there would be invasion into uh, the rural uh, site, and this would damage the um, beautiful landscape. However, three years down the road, there was an application from the government. So because of a change uh, uh, in the CE, civil servants could change their position. They have made a decision entirely different from theirs made before. So uh, what housing problem have you resolved? Chong Man Kit, Ma Siu Chang, your boss, uh, worked for a consultancy company. Silence, please. Can deputations uh, please remain silent? I now give the floor to the administration to respond, and there will be time for members to ask questions. Thank you. First of all, I want to thank the deputations uh, for their comments and questions, and I invite mem uh, our team to respond following the division of labor within the government. First, I'll talk about uh, the Wang Chao public housing development, and I invite Mr. Chung Man Kip from the Development Bureau to talk about the development of brownfield sites, since it was raised by a number of deputations today. First, the housing development scheme. This is uh, uh, one of uh, the major uh, housing development projects, and I think it has also attracted great public attention. Since 2013, in many public documents, we have uh, recorded uh, the um, how the whole thing evolved. On the 18th of October, we gave a paper to the housing panel setting out uh, how uh, the uh, whole thing evolved in open documents, and uh, the paper can be found in LegCo's website. All right, I may I, I outline the major developments. In 2013, it was reported in the press that we're thinking of 17,000 units there to start with as a suggestion. And then in 2014, after uh, some studies, we decided to adjust the plan. We start with phase one involving 4,000 units first, and the remaining uh, area will be developed in phases two and three. In 2014, we went to Yunnan District Council. Uh, the paper to the DC uh, called this development uh, Wang Chao Phase One. We started a public consultation in May 2014. We consulted the rural committee in June. The same year, we consulted the Yunnan District Council, October 2014. The town planning board started a statutory public consultation exercise. It lasted two months, covering all the rezoning involved for phase one of Wang Chao housing development. Some deputations asked, whether we have scaled down uh, the development from 17,000 to 4,000. We expressed in these documents that we call it Phase 1 Wang Chao Housing Development. It was noted by members of Yunnan DC that how come uh, it was 4,000 instead of 17,000, and some uh, members asked uh, why the brownfield sites were not used. We explained that it's not that we would not use the brownfield sites, but we said that uh, the brownfield sites and the associated uh, uh, issues will be dealt with later. We invited views, and 109 submissions were received by the TBP, and some submissions asked similar questions. Why the green belt was used, and how come brownfield sites were not used? Government representatives explained to the town planning board that we have not given up on building public housing on the remaining sites. We shelved the plan for the time being because uh, more um, uh, infrastructure and also uh, issues will have to be resolved first. By March this year at the LegCo Development Panel, in response to members' questions, we provided ex extra information that um, we have plans to build 4,000 new 
housing units, and we are working on the brownfield sites. The work is ongoing. Hopefully, we can build public housing in that area. However, we have to do it, conduct it later because we need more um, support on the um, operation on how to deal with the brownfield sites. At the earlier phase, we did indeed think about building 17,000 public housing units, but after studies, we decided that it would be um, faster to build 4,000 public housing units first at Wang Chao. But um, I want to stress that we don't intend to just build 4,000. For the remaining units, we would do them later. The reason is that the um, support required for phases 2 and 3 of Wang Chao would be greater than phase 1 because brownfield sites are involved. If we um, bundle all these phases together, the um, completion dates would be much later. We would first work on the 4,000 units in phase 1. This way we can get things done more quickly. And um, from 2024 to 2025, these 4,000 units would have been completed. So um, you can refer to public information. At um, in September this year, the public was interested and they asked us a lot of questions. In September, the chief executive convened a press conference, and our subsequent press releases also offered a lot of information. We have also submitted them to the housing panel. You can um, refer to the electrical website. Those were information or internal information we did not disclose before. For example, the the internal decision making process, um, the senior government officials, and the line of communication, etc. We have explained all those in writing. As for the um, unofficial consultation, we did we had two such sessions. We consulted whether we could build 17,000 public housing units altogether. And in 2015, the government can adjusted the target to unofficial consultations were done. All these information have been um, put in writing and shared with the public. From 2012 to 15, we com conducted or completed the planning and design study. Usually, it wouldn't be disclosed on the um, after masking certain information. It was disclosed on the 18th of October. So this is the general situation. Please remain silent. If those, um, please remain quiet. Otherwise, I would um, exercise exercise my power under the rules of procedure. Ms. Seng, please remain silent or I will ask you to leave. Please remain silent. Please stop shouting. Please stop. Please remain silent. If you keep shouting, we cannot continue. Ms. Seng, mm, please remain silent or I will ask you to leave. Please leave. Meeting is suspended. Can our security staff ask Mr. Mm -hmm. to leave, please?